This is going to be a quick video on data collection. If you want to go ahead and read section 1.3 of the book Biostat, this is the first book listed in our syllabus, uh, that will help you out through this section, through this lecture. As far as the lecture is concerned, we're going to go over the goal of statistics. That's going to bring in some new words we'll add to our course notes for us. We'll talk a little bit about sample bias, and then we'll see if we can wrap all this up in an example at the end. So the overarching goal of statistics, whoops, statistics, once you spell it right, <laughs> the overarching goal is to make educated statements about a population of interest using only a sample. Now, this definition is a little tough because it brings in two new keywords that I will want us to add to our course notes. So let's see if we can give these words some definitions before we try to use them in some small examples. So population is a broad group of things. Think nouns, could be animals, could be people, could be little bits of some enzyme of things of interest. Generally, that's all really a population is, is a broad group of things of interest that we want to make statements about. Oops. Some of the context surrounding population is it's often too expensive or time consuming. to collect all items in the population. So like if you're trying to learn about people's voting preference in the United States, well, we have polls that attempt to learn about people's voting preferences in the United States before actual elections. The election is the time with which we try to record everybody's vote, but you know, even then we don't get everybody's, we only get the people who are willing to vote. Um, if you're trying to make statements about all of the elephants in the world, it's too time consuming or difficult to go track down every elephant in the world. And nonetheless, that is the group we want to make statements about. If we're trying to make statements about every volcano in the world, we often can get to all the volcanoes if we have enough time and money, but even so, we can't collect all the information we want about the volcanoes. We have to work with a subset of the things of interest. And that's where our word sample comes in a subset of the population. And it's from this subset that we're trying to make statements about the overall population. The population is this great big broad group of interest, and the sample is a subset of that population from which we hope we can make general statements about the population. We're going to learn from the sample to make statements about the population. The next topic is sample bias. Oops. Let's just keep it simple right off the bat. Sample bias is bad. Sample bias occurs when you select let's say, sample only a specific subset of the population
and exclude intentionally or not other subsets of the population. To avoid sample bias, our goal is a simple random sample. That's going to be a key word for us, or key phrase. A simple random sample. This is a sample where each thing in the population has an equal probability of being selected. You can see that it contrasts with sample bias in that if you're avoiding intentionally or not some specific subset of the population, then you're not giving each element of the population an equal probability of being selected. So our goal in the end is simple random samples. This is best way to ensure the sample accurately reflects population. Let's try an example. I'm going to start with a simple example to think through. It's not really going to pay particular attention to anybody's major in this class, but I think it'll be a very tangible example. And then I'll do a second example that's specific to uh, the one I've thought up here is specific to ecology majors or something related. So our first example is going to specify as the broad group of interest or the population all graduates of Chico State. So this is a really large group of individuals spread across certainly the United States, but probably spread across the, the globe. They're hard to track down. It would be time consuming to find everyone to contact every Chico State graduate ever. There's too many of them. We don't know where they are. We certainly don't have a list of all of them, although administration attempts to maintain a list. Turns out it's a really difficult task. It would be too much of a burden, both financially and in terms of the time it would take you to get a hold of everyone, to be able to learn information about all possible Chico State graduates. Instead, what we attempt to do in the world of statistics is take a small sample from the population. Now, as we learned before, we are attempting to avoid sampling bias by taking a simple random sample. That is, each member of the population has an equal probability of being selected, even if not every member of the population is selected. They at least had an equal chance of being selected. So our simple and random is going to describe the sampling process, how we go about collecting those individuals. Often the easiest way to do it is attempt to create a list of the entire population enumerate them, that is give them numbers, and then randomly select the numbers using a computer. That's the best way to create simple random samples. Let's try another example. So say you're interested in tuna. It turns out in the globe there is Let's do it like this. Pacific tuna. And the Pacific Ocean is the largest, so I'm going to draw it fairly large. And there's Atlantic tuna. And there's 
southern tuna. That is tuna in the Antarctic Ocean, I believe. If not, we're going to go with it for now. If we are interested in tuna, the species, then a simple random sample would ignore the fact that the Pacific Ocean is the largest. And we would randomly select a sample giving each theoretical tuna in the world an equal opportunity of being sampled. And it would be from this sample over here, all of these individual tuna, that we would take measurements of whatever it is we were interested in. Maybe their length, maybe their tail fin height, maybe their weight, maybe their fat content. I don't know to understand how well they will adapt to colder or warmer waters. The simple random sample will give every tuna in the population an equal probability of being sampled. It turns out there are other ways to sample, some good, some bad. I'll let you explore in that biostat book other ways to sample that are good, stratified sampling, for instance, that would say pick a certain number from each of the distinct oceans. But the main thing we want to remember is our goal is to avoid bias in our samples. One of the ways bias in our sample could show up is we now know that there's like three distinct groups of tuna. If we only sampled from the Pacific Ocean because, well, we live at least in a state that borders the Pacific Ocean, it's convenient to only sample from the Pacific Ocean. The Southern and the Atlantic Ocean are far away from us. If we only sampled tuna from the Pacific Ocean because the Pacific was closer to us, we would call that a convenience sample. A convenience sample only samples elements of the population that are easiest to attain or to get a hold of. A convenience sample is easy. It doesn't mean it's the best. A convenience sample introduces bias into the sample by only going for the elements of the population that are, it's easiest to think, closest to you. Like closest to us relative to the Pacific Ocean, whereas the Atlantic and the Southern Oceans are further from us. Our goal in statistics is to make statements about the population using a simple random sample that avoids any kind of bias in our sample. A really easy one to remember that introduces bias is a convenient sample.